Okay, I get it. Not everybody has a bunk room to decorate, but a lot of us have rec rooms or small den areas that need to play double duty as guest rooms. So I'm hoping that you can see this process work on a room like that. This is part of a series of a lake house build and design. We have one big project that we've been working on and that is a lake house. Remember, I am not an interior designer. In fact, my expertise lies in the business arena. I have no previous design education whatsoever, but I do love a beautiful living space and I've been helping friends and family decorate theirs for years. So my process is something that I've used for a long time. Now let's get started on this bunk room. Before you start decorating, you always determine the purpose of the room. Look around the space and say, how do I really intend to use this? For us, this space was originally going to be unfinished storage. It's on the bottom level of the house, but it has a great view of the lake. As my husband and I walked through it, pretty late in the construction process, as we were standing there with the contractor, I raised my hand and said, can't this just be additional sleeping space? And what I heard back was, yeah, but we'll do that part later. Now, if you're 60 years old, later's too late. I wanted it right then and there. I also knew that if I brought in contractors later in the game to finish the space, it would cost me twice as much. And I really wanted it right then. So we talked about it. There was a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth. And finally we came to the decision to go ahead and finish the space out. And it was one of the best decisions we made on this house. This room was needed to provide sleeping space for four people, but there was another reason we needed it. We have lots of kids, over 20, under 20 who come to that house and we really needed them to be downstairs making all of that noise playing all of that music not upstairs with my husband and me mm, mm, mm. and i will tell you now that we have done this room my husband looks at me often and says i'm so glad the noise is downstairs so think about that there's a lot going on when you have kids in the house and that was the perfect location for them. Step number two, choose the overall look for the room. This was easy for me. I wanted something kind of campy, a little bit themey. So we decided to go with a fishing camp theme. Step number three, choose your fabrics. In a room like this with four beds, you could go very, very busy with duvet covers and pillows and all of the things. However, I decided to go with Pendleton wool blankets that were all in the same colorway. I did that because it makes the bed very easy to put together. One of the rules that we have at our lake house is that all guests, no matter who they are, are responsible for changing the sheets when they are finished at the end of the weekend. It would be an absolute nightmare for me to go around and change beds, probably 10 or 11 beds out every single weekend. I can't do that. So I wanted to make sure I didn't have a bed set up that was going to be too difficult for teenagers, 20 year olds, younger children to make back up and not really take too much of their time. Any other fabric that I used was really around curtains, which were very simple. I chose black, blackout curtains that we could use down there because of all the windows and because of the amount of sunlight that comes in the room. The other fabric I chose was for a dressing area and a shower curtain. That was actually a pair of curtains that I split up between the shower and the dressing area. They're fish curtains, they look kind of cute, they're very simple and were pretty easy to hang also, which is a big deal. Step four, choose tile, flooring, countertops. Flooring was really what I was choosing in this particular space. Because we decided pretty late in the game to use this as a finished space, we were not able to put down flooring and we chose not to do carpet. We felt that would be kind of icky in a lake space. It gets kind of humid and you don't want your carpet to be humid. So we decided to cover the concrete in a garage floor paint. You can get those in very neutral colors. I decided to use a grayish color and it has these flecks that you can put in there that will cover any kind of imperfection that's in the floor. 
Once again, because we decided we were going to do this late in the game, the contractor at that point had already scarred up the floors pretty badly, had some other paint on there and some other substances, I'll say construction substances that were kind of stuck to the floor that we couldn't get up. This particular paint decision was the best possible decision for this. It turned out looking very, very good, very finished, and it only took us about one to two hours to do the entire floor. I highly recommend looking into that, and you can get these great colors. You can find them at Lowe's, and you can find it at Home Depot as well. And of course, I used a Ruggable in there because I love me a Ruggable. I used one that was darker so that it wouldn't show dirt. So between this floor and the rug, you really can't see any dirt down there, and that is a wonderful thing in a bunk room at a lake house. Step number five, choose the paint. One of my favorite steps. I had a little bit of fun with this. I chose a very campy neutral green color for the walls and of course the ceiling. I cannot stand a white ceiling unless you have white walls. The white would just totally kill the look. Take the color all the way up to the ceiling from the walls. I also used a black trim paint. Now, I've mentioned this before, if you use a really dark color on your trim, your baseboards are going to show dust. You have to make sure you keep those clean. Other than that, they are wonderful if you're in an area that's going to get banged up quite a bit and this particular room gets banged up. People are dragging in water toys, leaning them against the walls, dragging in all of their coolers, their luggage and they are just getting slammed up against the walls left and right. It's really good if you have a darker color that doesn't show all the scuffing and all of the dirt. Step number six, choose your wood tones. I'm gonna say this was probably the most budget ridden room that we had in the house. So the luxury of choosing a wood tone really wasn't there for us. Basically it was, what have we got left and can it go in there? So we have all kinds of items that are in there with all different finishes. I'm not sure why it works, but it does. And I'm not gonna ask any questions. Step number seven, any existing pieces? Oh my gosh, there were so many in here. We used an old Adirondack style shelf that looks pretty good. It has some green tones in it. We used a sofa table slash credenza that's in there that's green. We used some really old night stands in there. Anything that we could find, we stuck in there. We knew it was gonna get beat up anyway by whoever was down there. I did buy some floor lamps, but they weren't very expensive. I got those on Wayfair, I believe. So it was really kind of a mix and match kind of room. There's something really cozy about it though, and it feels very livable, and there's no stress in wondering if something's gonna get scratched or stained or broken, because I can tell you, when you have two girls over 20, the makeup, the nail polish remover, the glue for the nails you're gonna do, all the things, that's gonna end up on your furniture. So just go ahead and put some beat up stuff in there to begin with and you will never stress. Now the furniture I do have in there that is new, those are twin XL beds that I got on Amazon. I believe they were $100 a piece. I, I think they were, they may have been cheaper. I also got mattresses to go on each one of those from Amazon as well. It was a very, very inexpensive purchase when you're thinking of beds. Beds can usually be pretty expensive, but these were very inexpensive and durable. Get the twin XLs. It's really nicer if you have the extra length. The width, not so much, but you really need the extra length when you have adults down there. The other existing items I had for that room were really some of my favorite things from the old house, and that's a fish collection that I was hanging on the walls in the old house. So I pulled those in, I thought it would be the perfect space for these. So you'll see on the walls that I had them kind of spread out. Most of them are pretty neutral. I used metal, I used wood. There's even one that's license plates, I think, put all together, but everything is neutral. So it's not adding any color really, but it adds some interest and I've bought them at different places on travels and I kind of like them. They look cute and it's a very campy room. Choosing your light fixtures. That's step number eight, your last step. I use ceiling fans a lot. They're really cheap. These are very inexpensive, even more inexpensive than the ones I have upstairs. 
but they work great. They're black, they match. So there's nothing really groundbreaking here. What are some other considerations when you're decorating a bunk room? This is for guests. So make sure if there are going to be four people down there that you are providing some privacy. We decided to take an area and make it a dressing room so that those that wanted to change into bathing suits while other people were in the shower could do so with some level of privacy. So the area that I set up has a rolling hanging rack and a bench in there so that people can take their bags in there, change and bring the bags back out. It has worked really well. That room gets used a lot and it's kind of cute. So think about where they're gonna get dressed. A lot of people don't wanna get dressed right in the middle of the room when there's tons of people sleeping in there. Think about privacy. Another consideration, storage. We were taking that whole bottom level and putting this bed area in there. We had to take some of that and use it for storage. We needed a place for shovels and rakes and weed eaters and pressure washers and extra water toys. Oh my gosh, those things take up so much room. We had floaties, noodles, canoes, everything. We had to stick them in that room. If it hadn't been for that, I probably would have added four more beds and made that room just huge and sleepable with eight people down there. And my husband would have had a coronary because he knows if you build it, they will come. Another thing to consider, have some fun. Do some fun stuff. This was the room where I broke my steadfast rule of don't get too themey. This is a bunk room. This is a casual, cozy little place. I went full on themey. I've got the rope clock, I've got the fish, I've got fish curtains. I have paddles down there. I did all the things that I kind of wanted to do upstairs but thought it was too much. And I just put it all in that room and got it out of my system. It's okay, do it, have some fun, but just don't do it all throughout the house. Something else to think about. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to change your mind. You can change your mind. Making mistakes is part of trying something new. Try, try, try. You are going to end up with a very unique and beautiful space that you want. Please like this episode and leave us comments if you'd like. Also, subscribe to Kojo channel. It's free. And then you'll get notifications every time we drop a new episode.